Welcome to today's series. In today's series, we will be looking at a programmable logic controller which is also known as PLC. The intricate part that made up this device will be discussed in detail and its application in an industrial setting. Stay tuned. Hey bro. How are you doing today? Hope all went well. Perfect Alex. I was in some factory today and I saw process engineering at its peak. I managed to identify the device that power up this device. I was told it is through the use of programmable logic controller also known as PLC. So Alex can you try to explain how this device's work? All right. That wouldn't be a problem. A programmable logic controller also known as PLC is an industrial computer that is used to control manufacturing processes. These processes are assembly lines, machines, robotic devices, or any activity that requires high reliability, ease of programming, and process fault diagnosis. Basically, these devices were used to replace large banks of hardwired relays and timers. So the normally open and close manipulation is now done in soft form instead of the conventional hardware form which involves wire terminations between relays and contactors. Now, before we dive in, let's look at how this device came to be. The first PLC was introduced in the late 1960s. It was designed to help in the control of manufacturing processes. At that time, using relays and timers was the order of the day. This posed numerous challenges. Most of these challenges stemmed from the need to use several relays to control just one machine which took up large amounts of space. Additionally, the relays had to be wired in a specific order for the machine to operate properly. If just one relay malfunctioned, the entire system would stop working, and troubleshooting could at times take hours to complete. Furthermore, implementing changes posed another set of challenges as they often required reconfiguring the entire system. In 1968, Dick Morley invented the first PLC called the Modicon 084 for General Motors. With this invention, Dick Morley was considered the father of modern day PLC. The plan then was to replace the hardwired relays and timers with programmable and flexible controllers. Since then, PLCs have been broadly adopted as the standard automation control system in discrete manufacturing industries. But the PLC that was introduced by Dick at the time was faced with a lot of challenges. One of the major problems then was troubleshooting. It was very difficult to troubleshoot issues when it arises. So basically Dick and his team of engineers are usually called for troubleshooting when the need arises. Of course, because they are always out in the field solving problems. This prevented the development of newer technology. So Dick knew that he had to find a solution to all these problems. He came up with a new hardware platform that is more modular in design and he also came up with a graphical way of writing code which is now known as ladder programming. So basically, this is the graphical illustration of the code that is written by his programmer. With these, faults can easily be troubleshoot because the ladder programming is similar to the schematic drawn during design and installations. Now, this PLC is made up of solid state components which are transistors and some other electronic components. These transistors replace the relay components used in a hardwired. With this, electric signals can easily be switched in solid states. 
The input and output modules are also in modular form which can be expandable to accommodate more input and output devices. The programming language used makes the device to be easily programmed and reprogrammed because the termination is seen graphically just like how it was during schematic drafting and design. The PLC has the ability to store programs and the problem are not lost during a power outage. Therefore, they have at least 1K of memory that can be expanded to 4K. After they have perfected their invention, this device was named Modular Digital Controller. And the company was called Modicon. The Modicon brand was later sold in 1977 to Gould Electronics and later to Schneider Electric which is the current owner. About this same time, Modicon created Modbus, which is a data communications protocol used with its PLCs. And Modbus has since become a standard open protocol commonly used to connect many industrial electrical devices. In a parallel development, Otto Joseph Struger is sometimes known as the father of the programmable logic controller as well. He was involved in the invention of the Alan Bradley programmable logic controller and is credited with inventing the PLC initialism. Alan Bradley is now a brand owned by Rockwell Automation. Alan Bradley became a major PLC manufacturer in the United States during his tenure. Struger played a leadership role in developing IEC 61131-3 PLC programming language standards. Because as more PLC are developed at a rapid rate, Control engineers are tasked with learning a new programming language. Hence there is a need for standardization. With these, Dr. Struger is known to have influenced the evolution of modern automation. However, on the other side of the Atlantic, PLC were also developing in large scale. Shortly after the first logic controllers were born in the 1960s, Siemens and ABB also developed PLC for industrial applications. The success story of the PLCs named Simatic began at the 1979 Hanover Fair. The exhibit there was the starting shot, as the Simatic S5 PLC went on to establish itself definitively in nearly every industry. At the same time, Customer requirements for system functionality and operability were also on the rise. In the 1980s, the programming of the systems was further simplified by the introduction of monitors and graphical programming to control engineering processes. Demands for decentralization of functions were also raised early on. These demands call for reduced wiring by bundling the signals at the machine level and transmitting them in packages to the PLC. In answer to those demands, distributed IOS were launched with the appearance of field bus technology. In 1993, Profibus became a recognized standard, and since then, networking has steadily become an increasingly important aspect of automation. In 1996, Siemens unveiled Totally Integrated Automation at a press conference in Rotterdam. Totally Integrated Automation now ensured both vertical and horizontal integration. Horizontally from inbound logistics to the production chain and to outbound logistics and vertically across all levels of the automation pyramid. This is a breakthrough that spanned the existing gap between process control engineering and PLCs. Totally integrated automation represented the ultimate debut of the age of decentralization. The increasing miniaturization of electronics made it possible to put more and more functionality into increasingly compact devices. In 2003, Profinet's communication protocol was developed. This protocol ensures that data are exchanged between controllers and devices in an automation setting. 
Profidec defines cyclic and acyclic communication between components, including diagnostics, functional safety, alarms, and additional information. In 1971 shortly after the first logic controllers were born in the 1960s, ABB launched its first hardwired controller called Sigmatronic B. Soon afterward, with the Sigmatronic E, the controllers became programmable with a programming language similar to Instruction List, still used today. In 1978, ABB released the Axiomeric. Axiomeric is one of the very first one axis computer numeric controllers since he's ever on the market. It was mainly developed to be used together with our groups of servo motors at that time. In 1981, the revolutionizing Procontic product family came to the market. Procontic B was the very first PLC on the market which offered decentralized IOS with the state of the art IO field bus named ZB10. The Procontic T300 offered high level programming languages, such as Pascal, Fortran, and C. Thanks to the modularity of the system, several customized developments of special function modules were undertaken together with external machine builders. The Procontic T200 was mainly used in the infrastructure segment where it was widely deployed together with a modem as a data collector. In 1994, only four years later, the CS31 platform was also the basis for a breakthrough development the first ever machine safety PLC which offered a decentral safety bus using one physical field bus for non-safety and safety IOS. At the same time, a rebranding process and upgrade took place and CS31 became the Advant Controller AC31. At the beginning of the 1990s, ABB launched the last product belonging to the Procontic family the CS31. 2005 also for us. The new millennium marked a new beginning. The PLC family AC500 was born, a brand new PLC platform to take ABB's PLCs into a new era. For the first time in the ABB PLC history and probably also on the market, one unified PLC platform was launched which used one software for programming and offered possibilities to seamlessly share iOS across one single product family. In 2016, ABB launched AC500 v3. This integrate the new programming language into their products and paved the way for an interconnected world by including state-of-the-art protocols such as OPC UA, MQTT, and KNX. Again in the year 2016, Wecon PLC was birthed in Xiaowen, China. And a lot of amazing stuff has been reported on this device. This will be discussed in a later series. These days we have a lot of protocols for exchange of data. These protocols are Modbus, Ethernet, IP in the US. While in Europe we have Profinets, Ethercat, Circos, Powerlink and CC Link. There is a moral lesson that can be learned here. Because at that time, most electricians believe that this device will not be effective. To them, it seemed impossible that this small embedded processor could replace the tried and true relay logic systems. But imagine where the industry would be today if the PLC technology had never been embraced. The story of the PLC also shows us that continual change is possible. Truly, the PLC was a world-changing invention. But the early versions were certainly not the best. But each revision has paved the way for faster, better, and more efficient machines. No matter what technology is available to us today, we can always ask the question. How can I make this better? Perfect. I have learned a lot. Again. Earlier on you spoke about the relay logic which is the manipulations of normally open and normally closed contact. Can you try to explain this a little bit? Alright. 
These will be discussed in the next series. Now let do a quick recap. We started off looking at how PLC came to be. From there we look at the leadership role played by Otto Joseph Struber. The success story of the PLC named Simatic was discussed extensively. Finally we ended of looking at how the various communication protocol was developed. Hope you have learned something new today. See you in the next one.